Hello, I'm David Chaston with 90 at 9, brought to you by interest.co.nz. This week, everything you need to know in 90 seconds at 9 o'clock. With news China may be heading for a dollar debt crisis, and just when investors are turning away from US Treasuries. In the US, foreign investors, especially governments, are tiring of holding American government debt. New official data shows a foreign investment outflow in September, essentially ending a long-term inflow trend. China's holdings and Treasury securities fell by $13 billion in a month and $31 billion in a year. Japan's holdings in Treasuries fell by $2 billion since August and by $56 billion since September 2017. China holds about $1 trillion of US Treasury securities and has about $3 trillion in foreign exchange reserves. All very impressive until you realise its private sector owes about $3 trillion in US dollar-denominated debt. A falling yuan exchange rate to the US dollar or a rise in US benchmark interest rates will hurt. Both at the same time will hurt even more. Analysts are now worrying about a dollar debt crisis in China. In the US, household indebtedness rose again in the September quarter and across almost all types of borrowing. That is now almost five years of continuous rises following almost five years of straight reductions. U.S. industrial production growth stalled in October, but the result was probably better than it first appears. Car production was lower, so that means there is strength in the rest of the American factory sector. And that comes as both the Pacific and Atlantic ports report surging import volumes there. Canadian factory sales edged higher in data released over the weekend, and Ontario has decided to exempt new builds from its rent control regulations in an attempt to encourage investors to build more. Comments that were interpreted as dovish from the newly appointed Vice Chairman of the US Fed saw the greenback fall and US benchmark interest rate yields fall. He said interest rates are near neutral levels, which traders interpreted as meaning the Fed may be near done raising its policy rate. Mexico, however, has moved again already. Over the weekend, they raised their policy rate by 25 basis points to 8%. And Indonesia has also surprised with its policy rate rise a move upping it to 6%. In India, there is a breakdown in the relationship between their central bank and the government, with the government insisting on easy money, less fight against inflation and protection for some weak banks, some of which are its friends. Later today, key decisions will be taken to impose more direct oversight of central bank decision-making there. And the US Treasury 10-year yield is starting the week at 3.07%, after a dip of 12 basis points last week, which puts it at a two-month low. Their 2.10 curve is still at 26 basis points, however. The Aussie 10-year is at 2.68%, the Chinese 10-year is at 3.37%, while the New Zealand government 10-year is at 2.74%. Gold will start the week at $1,221 an ounce. US oil prices are stable today at their new lower levels at just under 56.50 a barrel. The Brent benchmark is now just over 66.50 a barrel. The Kiwi dollar is starting the week at 68.8, which consolidates a 10% gain against the greenback in the past three weeks. On the cross rates, we're also firm at 93.8 Aussie cents and 60.2 euro cents. That puts the TWI at 73.1. It's higher since June. I'm David Chaston. That was 98.9, brought to you by interest.co.nz.